Shanghai, China's Paris, the Queen of the Far East, the city of easy money, the favorite destination of adventure seekers and gangsters. Shanghai has earned many nicknames in the course of its history, especially since the mid-19th century, when the city was open to international sea trade. The fortunes of this megalopolis depend on its vicinity to the sea and its large port open to trade from all over the world. The Yangtze has always made it a genuine gateway between China and the rest of the world. Pudong is an area of the city witnessing sprawling development. Once a swamp, the area has been reclaimed in recent years thanks to tremendous urban and architectural development whose hallmark has been modernity, driven to its extremes and interpreted with spectacular design solutions. The Oriental Art Center, home to the Shanghai Symphonic Orchestra, is one of the many innovative projects bearing witness to architecture as a symbolic means. The centre was designed by the French architect Paul Andru and it covers 40,000 square metres in the Pudong New Area. The building is shaped like a flower with five petals, like a butterfly orchid. The idea is that of an organic design perfectly embodying China's traditional spirit and culture. City nature. Since it's a park, there's a bond with nature. That's what I think. Every time there's such a bond, it must be underscored. There's a relation with the city's landscape. However, the exact opposite is true. By night, the orchid opens its petals to the light, conveying a sense of charm and mystery. The complex hosts three theatres, a Philharmonic theatre with 1,979 seats, an opera house with 1,054 seats, and the Chamber Music Theatre with 330 seats, as well as an exhibition hall, music shops, a restaurant, an art library, and a multimedia and teaching centre. The different areas are perceived as separate bodies in a less hierarchical relation. More, they're more dependent one compared to the other. They're surrounded by green on all sides. From this point of view, it's a healthier, more open building. We're in a larger park, that's all. Uniqueness and exclusiveness, formalism and functionality. They all blend perfectly in the building. The dark granite floor seems like the soil in the woods, while the staircases are like trails climbing up a mountain. The interior walls are built using an ancient traditional Chinese material. Ceramics revisited in a modern key with great mastery and skill. There were these walls, and they were covered with this shell protecting the inside of the rooms, making them look very solid and material. We couldn't use any sort of sheet metal. It couldn't even be a fine material like a textile, a net or anything else. It had to be something, how can I say, something earthy. Of course, then came the idea. China is the country of ceramics, isn't it? In the large cloister, the dozens of structural steel beams point in every direction, almost like the branches of trees in the woods. 
stratified metallic glass used for the exterior walls shield the sun, transforming the light into beams that gently glow in the woods. Gems of light floating in space. Ingenuous fireflies designed by the architect. All in all, we had a large empty space where we added a certain degree of density with bars of irregular bars arranged almost at random. Then we realized that we had to position the lighting fixtures with the same randomness or rather apparent randomness so that they could become part of this dense space in the dense emptiness of the whole. To create this evocative ambience, Paul Landru used the gem fixture in the common spaces visible on the outside. Designed originally for the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris, these gems of light create a typically Chinese interplay of lights like those projected by paper lanterns. They float at different heights, creating optical effects and mysterious depths as the visual context varies. The gems installed have an ellipsoid metal halide lamp ensuring greater brilliance and color rendering compared to conventional halogen lamps. This solution made it possible to reduce the number of fixtures installed from 800 to 400 and cut the maintenance time and costs. Long life, stable performance and energy saving meet with elegant shapes and new functional approaches. GEM is an innovative technological solution both in terms of design and lighting quality. As far as I'm concerned, in my creations, it is the first fixture for space. Shanghai embodies the huge contrasts of modern China on the edge of poverty and survival on the one hand and great wealth on the other. The Oriental Arts Centre is the cultural icon of this new territory. Its architecture blends modernity together with China's cultural tradition, in which nature is experienced as something with symbolic and expressive meanings. These are touchstones, also in its magmatic development and in the pulsing of a growth basically economic in nature and which seems to be boundless.